Well, welcome everyone. I'm very happy to see so many people turn out on this beautiful day. I uh, went over for breakfast this morning. I started coughing and having a sore throat and all that. Well, it went away. I got the best cough drops money can buy here. And uh, so if I lose my voice, we're in trouble. So, why did I call this urban before the renewal? You know, I looked up the, the word urban as to what it means, and it's established towns or cities. So it's not that, not that old a description because towns and cities were formed by people who wanted a little bit of extra, like sewer systems and water systems and that sort of thing. So uh, our urban renewal, much cussed and discussed over the years. And I'm not going to get into the pros and cons because, uh, you know, it's a rabbit's hole. And um, just present the, the photos and people have to judge for themselves. Back, back then, somebody asked me a while ago about a house that was torn down in Newark. Couldn't figure out why they would tear this beautiful house down. There she is. And, uh, you know, and those were different times. Now, uh, you know, the what we call the Ellerton Mansion, which was later the Elks Club. Mm -hmm. And uh, that wouldn't have been torn down nowadays. People would recognize the value of it. And there'd probably be professional offices or a restaurant there or something. But that's the way it is. So. I want to show you some photos of what Newark looked like way back when, and uh, my uh, sources of photos from my collection on loan from the museum here in Newark, Google Images, and the World Wide Web. In many cases, I'd see a photo on a computer and right click. <laughs> I'm not getting photos and collecting them for the value. I collect them just so we have them, they don't get destroyed. <coughs> so, let's move on here. If, if we're not being attacked. <laughs> Safe. <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> Why do I have this awful photo up here? Well, it's not very good quality, and it was from from a plate. But that corner is the corner that many of us knew as Wild Hex Drugstore oh, Corner. Oh, oh, yeah. And the reason I show it is two reasons. It's from the Allerton family, but the fact that it was built in a strange way. To, the bottom floor is all frame lumber. Top floor is brick. Strange. So there you go. And uh, the Allerton family's connection to... Newark and so forth is almost something you can do in a separate program. Very, very interesting. So there's that corner which became the Wild Hag Drugstore, 1922. This Hank's Drugstore then. When I look at that, I think about, well, no cars, no pavement, no trolley tracks. Trolley tracks are 196 or before or after. Then I look at the, the spire up here. See that spire? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the original Methodist church before it was remodeled extensively, I think, in 1923, Don? Yes. Yeah. And that spire was taken down a little bit before that. It was dangerous. 
So that's how we uh, try to guess at the age of photos, with little clues like that. South Maine was spared from urban renewal. However, I remember having a conversation with a one-time chairman, and he said, if we could have kept going, we would have done South Maine, too. Oh. Thank goodness they didn't keep going. <laughs> Similar. And what do we see? The spider. Uh, these buildings are all gone. Tree in the middle of the street. <laughs> it was just driving around it, that's all. <laughs> and uh, a house on the left. was a Allerton house that was torn down to eventually build St. Michael's Church, or school. And that was owned by uh, Lucy Allerton. Sure. How's that? Good? The Upper House Block, located on the north side of East Union, contained 23 stores and uh, establishments. It was called the largest mercant uh, mercantile under one roof between Rochester and Syracuse. And it burned 1925. Um, it was rebuilt, and later on we knew it as the Bellotta Building. Torn down by good old urban renewal. So here we are again, the same corner with the drugstore. And the, the frame building here, at the time of that photo was the A.E. Williams General Store. The, <clears throat> one of the better stores, general stores in Newark. Here we go. <clears throat> it burned. It was replaced by a gas station. The Four Corners Service Center, owned by... Anybody know who, so who owned it? George? Uh, yeah. No, the corner. Yes. No, no. Oh, oh, yeah. Tony. And uh, you'll see a photo of that later. <laughs> now we're looking at uh, the corner where Lincoln Rochester was. And all of that was gone before we were around. Sorry about the quality of the photo, but it tells the story. Once again, the same area. And the tall building that you see at the end, way, way down, was moved from there to the other, about 200 feet to the north. It was Patsy's Market during our, during our time. So this photo dates before 1913 when they did the <clears throat> enlargement of the canal. Had to move that building. And how did they move it? Block and tackle, a little at a time. They didn't use uh, any motorized equipment. And they didn't move it fast. <laughs> And there it is, set up on, uh, and for some reason the photo doesn't show the blocks, but set up on blocks. There's the Noah's Ark clock. Yeah. 
And there it is. We finally got some quality photos here. Now, I one time wanted to do a story on mom and pop groceries. And I had to make a decision. Was that a mom and a pop or not? Was it open on Sunday? That was the first requirement. So, uh, does anybody remember Celestino's restaurant? That was just down the street. What's Patsy noted for? Oh, shoe polish on his head. <laughs> he was very subconscious about his bald. <laughs> he did many things to him. <laughs> Not nice. <laughs> this reportedly is a Newark, the, four, the Four Corners, obviously, and the first automobile in Newark. Well, who knows? I don't even know what kind it was. I said, okay. This is my favorite photo. And uh, this I had published in a couple of magazines. I can't remember which one they were, but probably auto related. I sent them in. And why did they publish? Because of war. So we tried to decide what uh, the age of that photo was. And there's Wilkes. There's uh, Freddy's Auto Supply. So now where Wilkes was, was before that it was a grocery store. And the same with Newark Stationery. And uh, then I got looking at the cars. And uh, Karen can tell you that I am very good with that system. <coughs> We'd be watching a movie, and I'll say, that, that's a 1923, because that's a 1923 car, is the newest car there. <coughs> well, in this case, this station wagon down here at the bottom is 1956, so it's the newest car there, and obviously it's Christmas, and knowing that cars came out in October, the new models. So let's put this at uh, Christmas time, 1955. JP sign. You can see a little bit of the corner gas station. But Woolworths is the reason that photo got chosen. And when I was growing up, Woolworths was equal to anything. Walmart. I mean, it's the place to go. There's nothing else. But something else. There, there. It took me a while to figure out why are all those cars lined up. Because during the holidays, parking was so short that they actually let people park in the middle of the road. And the police would be there to organize it. But what was going on at the same time was they were clearing land up uh, west of town for our new shopping plaza, and they would be had plenty of parking places after that. And there we are. Magical place. Did anybody here work? At Woolworths? Yeah. All too young. No, but I enjoyed the sandwiches with the ice cream that yeah. we had in the summer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, outside. Yeah. Of course, Wolks was built in the former <coughs> Loblaws store. Now, this is a commercial building, and at one time they rented the bottom floors. As stores, and eventually, as their business improved, they took the space over for themselves. Look at some of the prices. <laughs> and they own the building next door, 
And uh, that's that same building. What's different? They added a story on top. But they did such a nice job of it. Kept all the, the, <coughs> the year on there, the building. And so those buildings are still there. Now we're on East Miller. We can see the Grange Hall and the Rotary Boys Band. <coughs> Most everything was torn down. This house right here, 1947, was saved, moved to uh, East Maple Avenue by Dr. Serkin, and eventually um, oh god, what was his name? Lived there. <coughs> Tip of my tongue. Blodgett. Pardon? Blodgett. Blodgett. Yeah. When you want to know, you ask the second oldest person. <laughs> <laughs> so that house is still there, and all the rest have been torn down. Parker's Furniture Store. Another great photo of our our own Pure Quill gas station. Built in 36. They tore down a big brick mansion to build that. And uh, this residence was originally a carriage house for that mansion. They called it the Crothers Mansion. So fast forward to 1967 or 6 when they built the new Marine Midland Bank. They bought, somebody bought the house, moved it to the end of East Avenue. <coughs> I think the person who owns it now is here. <laughs> <coughs> However, it had to receive a whole new roof. But Seth, did you know it was originally a carriage house? So I heard, you mentioned that before. Is there any other description of, like I can't picture it. So this house was made from the carriage house? Right. And it would have looked different as a carriage house, right? Now, this is Dr. Mrs. They used to say that back then. Mrs. Dr. Thatcher, who lived where the, where the new coffee shop is. When he died, she needed a new place to live, so she bought the carriage house, converted it to a residence. That's what still exists. So that's where we are. Uh, there's a Christie house, right there, the big house, torn down, as well as a gas station to build a new Marine Midland Bank. The coffee shop that we have now is in there, but not very visible. <coughs> well, that's great. What's going on here? Zoom. <clears throat> now we're up into early fifties. 
two things come to mind. <coughs> the stoplight, the little, the little light up to the right of it, which was a signal for uh, when they wanted the police who were walking the beat, come back to the police station. They would light that little light. <coughs> Walking the beat. That's unheard of now. <laughs> so here we are at the Wellex busy corner drugstore. They were a Rexall store, which was iconic. And uh, behind it was the red and white. We have at the museum the Coca Cola sign that was there that my grandson discovered and said to me, Grandpa, isn't that something you would want? <laughs> and we have it. Uh, the call light, too. We have the call light, too. Oh, the call light. Henry Wildhack came to Newark in the early 20s, took over the drugstore and built eventually a new snack bar and soda fountain. Active in the community, community players, and uh, died at a very early age of heart attack. And uh, the current head of athletics at Syracuse University is his grandson. Is that a brick, part of a brick? Sure is. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, now, still in the 50s. They had this uh, circle at all the intersections that were, it was supposed to be a safe spot for pedestrians. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Just painted on, yeah. So uh, what do we have here? We have the Lincoln Bank. It was a Lincoln Alliance, Lincoln Rochester. And uh, it was a time when Newark had no banks, 1931 to 1933 or 4. During the banks had closed, and there were no uh, banks weren't allowed to have branches, so nobody was going to establish a new bank here. Finally, it passed a law that there could be branch banks in Lyman Stewart got uh, Lincoln first to come down here, Lincoln Alliance at the time, to take over that closed bank. And that was a, a wonderful thing. Imagine being a merchant and not having a bank. So, you know, uh, Barker Brothers Hardware, Crackford's Restaurant, Fishman's 5 and 10, uh, Hoffmeyer's. Plaza T room. Oh God. Hoffmeyer's. Lena. Lena Hoffmeyer with his dried up quartz. And Now there's a sign on top of that next building, and that was a North Sign Service, and that was his sign advertising his business, Tony Colosino. The lot there. Sidewalk sale dates. A big deal. Urban renewal was the end of that. And uh, that went on for 50 years. Pennies. There's the wall shop. There's now a coffee shop. Dozen. Dozen. 
Oh, dairy. Oh, dairy Cafe Jerry, we could talk about that for a long time. <laughs> and uh, I live alone and not, I'm not much of a cook. I'd be going there a lot. <laughs> and uh, the bakery, the, the smells as you went through the alleyway there, memorable. And they always had a round of roast beef, ready beef, special cut. Lunch and dinner. So another view that shows um, that same area. And the home dairy was, the inside was T-shaped. The home dairy was in the back part. Hart's food store was in the right. Ward's dress shop was in the left. A lot of stuff in that building. Now that building's still there. And it's <coughs> Salvatore's Pizza. Now to the left, Montgomery Ward. Montgomery Ward opened up on October 28th or 9th of 1929. What was that day? Crash. 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 But they survived and they were in business here in Newark until 1960. Now that tells a lot. There's the theater. Now I look at the cars. The newest car I see is 1951. I have this strange thing about numbers. Having had two paper routes, and I can still tell all, most of the numbers of my customers on West Miller, West oh. Union. <laughs> a few weeks ago at church, I'm sitting there trying to pay attention to the sermon. <laughs> I look up at the board with all the hymn numbers. Every one of those numbers was one of my paper customers. <laughs> <laughs> Including 448 West Miller, which was... Fred Schultz, the painter, paper hanger. But also, I remember that Adrian Borman on West Avenue 448 was also a paper hanger and painter. Now, what, what good is that information? <laughs> Mine works funny ways. Now, how do we, how do we date this? Well, the new bridge isn't there, the old bridge up. Both those bridges are 1913. So, uh, I don't know, I've, I would guess 1940s. There's the park that is now T. Spencer Knight Park. But it wasn't a park then, there was a canal building there, they stored things in. John, mm. yeah. it's after 1949 because you see McDougal's up at the top yeah, and yeah. that burnt in 49. Okay. So it's in the 40s. The famous McDougal fire where a child lost their life. That place where the T. Spencer Knight Park is, the village always had trouble even to this day trying to grow grass there. Well, that's because that was all filled in with canal, refuge, refuse, and pieces of concrete, and who knows what. <coughs> you can see the Blotta building, the many, many parts of that. Does anybody know what this is? What street? East Miller. East Miller. East Miller. East Miller. East Miller. Who said that? Okay, but well, anyway, yeah, you're right. And uh, that church building started out as a universalist church and became the first uh, the Lutheran church. That was torn down to build uh, a parking lot for, and it's still there behind Penny's. Yeah. I believe that. That building there is still there. Yeah. That was Nork's attempt to counteract the 
New Shopping Plaza. Well, there's a couple of things that I look at that and say, well, there's the stoplight when it was a monument out front of the, in the middle of the road, you had to go around. And uh, many a uh, intoxicated driver hit that. <laughs> Here's the bank building, later Noah's Ark. There's Patsy's Market building. And one of the two or three Wren houses that Dr. Williams took care of, built, and kept track of. Were they Martin houses? Martin, I'm sorry. Yeah. Now somebody, I think there's new ones there. I think the Garden Club put in new ones. Newark Grange. Torn down urban renewal. Built 1910. Now, they had rented out to uh, different stores, men's store, grocery stores in the first floor. A lot of the Bills are rented out, you know, owned by uh, uh, like uh, the Masonic Lodge and all that. The house on the right is one of the few cobblestone houses ever torn down in Newark. Well, there was a grocery store in the left hand bottom part of it. And every Monday morning when you manager of the store got there, he'd find all kinds of merchandise on the floor. Drove him crazy. So he decided one time, spend the night. See, he blamed it on kids getting in. Well, come to find out the kids would take the weights from the uh, fire escape on the side and take the weights and let them bang against the building, knocking all the groceries on the floor. <laughs> Did anybody go to the record house? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. We did. It was a big deal. Yes. What was that? Record house. Oh. You, you, you farm girls wouldn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> And we used to have the fire department stand by, make sure that nobody smoked. Now, this is not the North Diner, not Schofields. It's a diner that was down on the four corners when a man by the name of Ben Woods owned the gas station and the diner and other properties. But, oh no, wait a minute, I'm sorry. This is Burns' diner. It was down on East Union. Don't know who the people are. That was a small diner. Got moved once. I don't know the kind of the make of the diner. and It was never revealed. Now, we don't have a lot of photos of East Union. And East Union drove a lot of the urban renewal uh, plans because they said, all these three-story buildings, what are you going to do with them? Nobody will live upstairs. But they didn't have to tear them all down. This was next to burned furniture across from the firehouse. I think at one time that lunch room was known as help me out PB lunch. lunch and there's a cashier at Wegmans short lady about this big works there part time and I said to her didn't you used to work at PB lunch as a waitress you remember that <laughs> We wouldn't have many photos of East Union 
were it not for the Rose Parade. And this shows the Elliott Clothing Store. It shows the former Crescent Theater. There was three at one time. Wow. The crescent on each unit, and why was it called crescent? <coughs> the window above it was a crescent-shaped window. Mm -hmm. Then there was, um, help me out, yeah. Granite Theater, down uh, next to the Gardner Hotel. Oh, the Granite Theater was later owned by uh, Snorts. As a, that's where they had their IBM equipment. <laughs> And uh, what was the one that was um, ran? They ran a taxi out of the old theater. That was uh, Crescent. Okay. Yep. Not a very good photo, but it shows behind uh, Wild Hacks Drugstore. It shows the People's Store, which was later Newark Market. And what else was in there? Red and white. Red and white. Red and white. Yep. North Market. And eventually Farrell's gas station. <laughs> well, I stuck this in here because it's not downtown. And uh, if Jane Allen was here, she'd be telling us what it was. Um, there was a railroad track ran across. East Miller near the Pennsylvania Station. And uh, that little grocery store is right next to the tracks. And their customers were people from Perfection Foods, maybe Halligan's, um, the railroad, so forth. Later it was con converted to a residence and then torn down. Well, another one of those. I believe this is also the Four Corners, looking west of East uh, West Union. Tom and Jerry pulling the fire wagon, and you see the the bakery next door. Mm -hmm. That was my my grandparents, great grandparents, the Briggs's Bakery. Now this is a good quality photo, mm -hmm. even though it dates to night before 1913. The Newark Hotel and the annex torn down to widen the canal. It was a fine hotel from what I have read. And of course, the home of the founder of Newark. Captain Miller, and uh, there's a sign there now that designates that spot, historic sign. The only thing we ever got on George Farrell, he was a fine person, the only thing we could ever get on him was that he bought that and tore it down. <laughs> so, oh well, the times were different back then. Look at the size of these buildings. Now this is after 1906. And shows the opera house. First floor was shops. Second floor was offices. Third floor was apartments. And so forth. <coughs> what was the name of that shoe store then? The first x-ray machine, am I correct, was Jean's shoe store? Or what, did your grandfather have an x-ray machine? Yeah. Same year? Yeah. Well, Dr. Ketchum lived at Soda's Point, not too far from my cottage. And we used to do trivia all the time. 
And he was amazed at the stuff that I knew because I wasn't even alive when we talked, you know, the things he talked about. He said, I've got one for you you'll never get. He said, he said, I'm a cancer doctor and I had a lot of patients who were former shoe salesmen. I never said a word. I got up and did this. <laughs> he went berserk. <laughs> that was, it turns out they banned these machines because shoe salesmen who was, usually found themselves a lot of time to uh, kill, they would put their feet in there every single day <laughs> and it eventually caused cancer. <laughs> so, I didn't very often get anything on Mr. Ketchum, but I, that worked. <laughs> Now, notice the man in the corner leaning against the pole. Here's a colorized version that you can't see very well. I put the wrong slide in there. Poles are all gone, all the wires gone, tracks gone, but he's still leaning against something. <laughs> Chris Davis pointed it out to me, and I always talk about it. <laughs> Any ideas? Oh, Windsor. 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 With its additional story. See the sign to the left? That's where Schultz furniture started. That's a nice photo. Windsor was called the Working Man's Hotel. The Gardener was a little bit better, so I'm told. Now we're down on, the, on West Union, where Russ's store was. And uh, all I can tell you is many years later, that's where Western Auto started out. In the old Marissa store. And there's Marissa's in its heyday. See the baskets out front and the bottom? What's in those baskets? Pansies. Very good. The rest of it was the first store in Newark to really get into a frozen foods, bird's eye. Shelts' store. Well, what people don't know is that there is a house inside that store. And you can see it from the back. Go down the alleyway behind you, you'll see it. So, Mr. Schultz bought the store out of the house and then built a store around it. First, first uh, without the second floor. You can almost see the difference. He built the first floor and then the second addition. And next to it is what is now Ruffalo Appliance. You can only see part of it. And then, of course, there's the mansion. The Ellerton Mansion, later the Elks Club. Another great photo. This is similar to the earlier photo that I showed you. There's a um, UPS truck there. One of my photos shows a Bell telephone truck. I'm not sure I have it here or not, but um, it always has the ladder hooked to the side on the driver's side. Well, many years ago I was reading something, that's why it was there, because that's so the driver couldn't get out in the traffic. He had to get out the other side. Oh. 
I'm full of useless information. <laughs> There's our proud firemen with their fleet of trucks in around 1947. Joe Pierce Arrow rescue car. There are two pumpers they bought together, package deal and what they were left over World War II sack. The 41 Persh and the 1923 ladder truck. Chain driven. There's lab laws where Wilkes was later. And market basket, which was later the Newark stationery. We're back down here with uh, Schultz Furniture Building. <coughs> and it's tough to see. See my arrow? Yeah. That's Newark Motors, their, their first location. They came to town in about 1927. Took over the Chevrolet franchise, built that building. So the building where, um, where um, Ruffalo's is now was originally an automobile dealer, hard to believe. But don't, back then they didn't have a whole, as many cars on display, they just, uh, and the, the street wasn't as wide. And later on, it was a and &P grocery, and then a drugstore again, and it is now Ruffles. So this empty lot here is where they built the Montgomery Ward store in 1928, 29. And this is the original home of the Newark House Club. Nothing new there except the time it was. The name of the movie was Island of Desire. It's not what you think. This was before that. So, so there's your AMP market. AMP stood for the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company. Thank goodness they didn't tear down South Maine. Yeah. Chafees. Now when we go to date the photos that have Chafees in them, we look and say, well, is it two-story or three? Chafees had a fire, what, 1941? 43. I, I know that date now. It's my birthday. <laughs> So anything from uh, with only two stories is after 43. The dog's trying to get to the safe spot. Get to the safe spot. Yeah. That's <laughs> cute. Now when I look at an old photo of that area, I look for a Hudson car. Because that's what old Bill Hoffmeyer drove exclusively, Hudson's, long after they stopped making them. Here we are. <coughs> Newark Service Center and its famous Pegasus mobile gas sign. That sign today would be worth $30,000. Easy. When we were kids, I used to love to look at the, it was all lit up red. That's a great photo. The Opera House Fire. 
May of 1925. My grandparents and my mother had gone off to Sunday dinner in Palmyra. Coming home, saw the smoke in the sky. My grandfather had just bought a brand new Hudson or Essex car. And he didn't know what to do because you weren't supposed to drive new cars more than 15 miles an hour for the first 500 miles. <laughs> so he started speeding up and my grandmother said to him, don't wreck your car, it isn't worth it, because what are you going to do when you get there? <laughs> well, he was afraid it was his factory. They should burn him. So one of the photos shows him in the crowd. Hey, John, what's the building with the clock on the top? I didn't know that. That's the famous Noah's Ark. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you asked. The First National Bank. Yeah, First National Bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the banks closed, a man by the name of Henry okay. Wales Nichols. I'm going to be 80 in July, so. <laughs> Wales Nichols. He invested in that building, bought it, rented it out, but he didn't, he was not a fan of daylight saving time. So he never allowed the clock to be set back or ahead. <laughs> and uh, even in his will, said, while that clock and building was in his estate, it was not to be changed. Imagine that. <laughs> and it was he that built the chapel at the cemetery in memory of his wife. Which street corner is that? Corner of, uh, it's hard to describe what's there now. No, uh, parking lot on the one side. It's all those low buildings that really don't have any. Yeah. Post urban renewal, either way. The clock is at the North Middle School. It was saved and restored and uh, was in the Stuart Park at one time, but then it got moved to uh, the North Middle School. No, I'm pretty sure they do. <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, both banks were out of business about the same time, about a year in between. Yep. The Gardner Hotel. <laughs> With this addition, that might have been about the time that Paul, uh, Curtis Schofield ran it. It was a fine hotel at the time. Had a beauty shop. Uh, Mason's barber shop got started in the back. Yeah. And there's a 1939 Buick, right, Dan? Where was the Gardner Hotel? Gardner Hotel was where the American Legion is. I'm glad you asked. This is the back alley. Just prior to urban renewal. These were dark days. Buildings sitting there waiting to be torn down. This is North Main across the bridge. <coughs> the old uh, Morgani's Market. You notice how it was another one of those situations where there was a house added on to. Go up down Monroe Avenue in Rochester, a lot of those things. And a house building on the right was an auto dealer, Pontiac, and then Kaiser Fraser. John, what yeah. sits there now? What's there now? Quality Inn? Quality Yep. <coughs> Soon to be remodeled, so they say, with his own money, no grants or handouts from the government. 
And then next door, the famous Willow Avenue Hotel, one of the few bars I never was in. Why was it called the Willow Avenue Hotel? Because at one time North Main was known as Willow Avenue. A long time before. Same area. Parking meters, they're going to be knocked down too. I heard somebody else say that they've never been in. Was that a rough bar? A rough hotel? Oh, well, yeah. I wouldn't know. I was never in. <laughs> 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 uh, I was in Jim Hart's drinking um, no. Black Label. Or if it was me, they had now, of course, that uh, former First National Bank became Noah's Ark. The first manager of Noah's Ark was a man by the name of Fred Lombrizio. Oh, Freddy's Toy Store. Then Ben Schumann bought it. Ben Schumann was a good example of um, somebody who got displaced by urban renewal. He, uh, he was a hard-working man, lived on Elmwood Avenue. And when they forced him to sell his building, he wasn't old enough for Social Security yet. So he went to Whiteman's and was a uh, banker. Didn't bother him, he just probably made more money doing that. But he, uh, he had to get his time in for Social Security. <laughs> Says it all, doesn't it? Now we've got a little time, and if I can make this work, I want to go to some other slides that I have. That's Venice, Florida, where I used to go. One time I was walking out of the municipal building, I walked by the dumpster, and here are these hard-covered books, big books. And what they are were, they were Sanborn maps, fire insurance maps, that they had thrown away. What great research tools these are. Now this is 1912. Detailed descriptions, piping, Square footage. Yep. So I now there's a website where you can get on and see at least 1912. I hope this one comes up. Okay. No, that's the right one. This is worth waiting if I can get it. Back. <coughs> There we are. Now we're up into the later years. What do we have? Well, as a result of urban renewal, we have the Corner Tavern. Which never replaced the Newark Grill in there. <laughs> we have a fine uh, apartment house that started out as senior citizens only. And the government said you can no longer uh, just senior citizens, you got to uh, let anybody go there. These monstrosities of a building never really did. Uh, you know, the dry cleaner is there, thank goodness. 
And but other than that, just plain old. This was this is what they done all this for. Yeah. We got a new bank out of it. However, it sat empty for quite a while. And I, I was doing business at the time with Canandaigua National Bank, and I ran into the president. I said, why don't you come to Newark and look at this empty bank building? No, nope. he says, we know about it, but it won't work. You know why? Pe and he said this, I didn't. People want to park out front of their bank, not around the corner, and have to walk through the drive through this is the A and P under construction on the corner of Mason and Miller. So that's dated quite back, quite a ways. And after they closed, there was a Cal Lawson had a store in there. Then it was a Sears catalog store. Now it's a dollar store. <laughs> you think he's in? You think that's bad? How's that? <laughs> How soon we forget? The new Marine Midland Bank, and this is dated right about that time it was built. Urban renewal is in effect, and this is what's left of the Gardiner Hotel. The next building would be the original Granite Theater. This is just days before urban renewal on South Main. Jim Hart's Crockford's later, back and forth Crockford's. Um, Marine Midland Discount, or Midland Discount. The new Acme store up there now. Market Basket moved up to the smaller store. When Acme bought them out, they built a new store, but now the new store is gone, and the old building is still there. So this is the latest sign that I just photographed on the corner of West Miller and South Main of uh, the new DRI $10 million uh, deal. Yeah. Expected completion date, mm -hmm. March of 2023. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and then, wow, yeah. now we've got smoke shops. <laughs> they don't cause any problem, do they? <laughs> This I took, I had another one, but I'm not going to put it in here. I wasn't well received when I took that photo. They didn't like me too much either. So, so North has three small shops? Oh, maybe three or four, maybe as many as six. Papers of six. Six of the papers. Nothing else to do. Such is the times we live in, and thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Questions? Join us.